Hello again and welcome to another Warlord Wednesday, the episode of the week where we talk about all things bolt action. In today's episode, we shall be continuing our Beginner's Guide series, this time taking a look at the armies of Great Britain. The British are one of the major factions in Bolt Action. They have a huge amount of model support from Warlord Games, with many newer kits being produced for the army. They also feature in a number of starter armies as well. So it's no wonder that this army is incredibly popular and common on the tabletop. However, they're also one of the more complicated factions. When it comes to collecting them, many players suffer from the agony of choice because you've got such a breadth of models to pick from. And even if you pick the kits that you like, their tabletop rules also have a lot of choice and can be a bit tricksy. Therefore, they are the perfect faction for a classic Mordian Glory beginner's guide. But without further ado, let's fix our bayonets, rule Britannia, and for king and country, right into today's episode. So the first thing to know about the British is they are an incredibly flexible faction, and you can tailor your army to do almost anything you want on the tabletop. Are you the kind of player that likes an elite infantry fighting force equipped with some amazing assault weaponry and that are good at barneying in close combat and getting up close and personal? The Brits have got you covered with their Royal Marine Commandos and British Airborne. Or would you prefer to have a more mechanized force consisting of lots of infantry inside armored personnel carriers? Well then, the British and their many Bren carriers have still got you covered. Or perhaps you're a big believer of the old adage, it always comes down to the infantryman and his rifle, and you like the idea of a big force of regular British riflemen with their Lee Enfields engaging in the mad minute. Well, guess what? The British still have you covered. No matter your preferred playstyle, the armies of Great Britain will have a faction rule to accommodate you. And this is one of the unique things about them. You see, unlike the Germans and the Americans who have fixed faction rules, for example, the Germans have Hitler's buzzsaw, which gives them extra machine gun shots, and the Americans have fire and maneuver, which allows them to move and shoot without penalty, the British do not have a fixed faction rule. Instead, there are a list of five which you can pick from, and each one is going to have a significant impact on how your army is going to play. For example, you could take Blood Curdling Charge, which allows you to charge the enemy without them being able to overwatch you, making assaults much safer and gearing your force towards close combat. Or you could go for Up and At Them. This allows you to remove pins whilst moving towards the enemy, making you much more maneuverable on the tabletop. However, for most beginning British players, if you're not certain what playstyle you like or you're still just learning the game, I would recommend the rapid fire army trait. This simply gives you more shots from your rifleman and is a straightforward damage output increase, something which is always going to be useful in any game. Unfortunately, there is a downside to this flexibility. Whilst the Brits are the jack of all trades, master of none, they can be beaten out by those factions which specialize in one particular thing. Sure, you could make your British an assault force, but you're probably still not going to beat the Japanese in a straight up brawl because the Japanese are the best close combat army in the game. If you're a Warhammer 40k player, it's kind of like the Imperial Guard. Sure, you can make a combat guard army, but you're going to lose out to those world eaters. And sure, you can make a purely shooting guard army, but you're probably not going to be able to outshoot the Tau. But you will be able to outshoot the world eaters, and you still will be able to outcombat the Tau. But let's move on from the devil's game of 40k and focus back on bolt action, because the next best thing about the British is their massive unit variety. Not only can they use their own wacky and wonderful vehicles, such as the Matilda II or the Churchill AVRE, but they also can draw upon the US motor pool as well, thanks to Lend-Lease. I mean, just as a quick example, if you were to collect the British 8th Army, you could have your infantry supported by a Matilda II, or maybe prefer a Crusader, or perhaps you do go down the Lend-Lease route and instead you go for a Sherman or a Stuart. 
It's entirely up to you. All of those vehicles were historically accurate with the army and each one is going to bring something different to the table and will have a big impact on how your army plays. But it's not just vehicle variety. You've got a huge amount of different infantry at your disposal. Australian and New Zealander Anzac forces, South Africans, Gurkhas, and many more. Each one bringing something special and their own unique rules to your army. But if all of this sounds really complicated and feels like a bit of a barrier to entry, don't worry, because like every faction, the British have loads of generic unit options as well. You can take your infantry in generic squads as either inexperienced, regular or veteran. And if I may give you an example from my own personal experience, both myself and Traitor Tom have 8th Army British as one of our factions in for action. But I went for the generic Tommies with Brody helmets and he went for the Indian rifles. His models look completely different to mine. But because we're both beginners and we don't want to get bogged down in all the different potential faction rules, we both just use our armies as generic British with the rapid fire option. Essentially, our different models are just aesthetic and we just like to keep the rules as straightforward as possible. I mean, just building upon this for a moment, Essentially, your British are as complicated as you want them to be. You can really do the deep dive into a particular historical unit and represent them really accurately on the battlefield, or you can just have a few models, chuck them together and use some standard rules. They are one of those factions which are easy to learn, but difficult to master. Now, having said all this, I do think there is one particular playstyle that Whilst the British can do, they're not really geared towards it at all, and that is your classic inexperienced horde. Unlike the Soviets with their free infantry squads and their commissars, or the French with their hastily mobilized reserves, the Brits don't really have any special rules that encourage you to take masses of conscripts. Instead, the game designers encourage you to go down this route of regular or veteran infantry that are well equipped with submachine guns and LMGs. And this is well reflected in the most common British sub-faction you are likely to encounter, the British Airborne. I personally have seen more Red Devil armies than all of the other British factions combined over the last three or four years of playing bot action. In fact, if you're brand new to bot action and you're thinking of picking up Brits as your first army, I would recommend you go down the Red Beret route and you get yourself that British Airborne Starter Army. It is one of the most cost-effective bang-for-buck sets you can get in the entire game. With a decent discount from a good third-party retailer, you can get that set for about 50 quid and it comes with a full 1,000 point army. That is the equivalent of getting a 2,000 point army in 40k and it has everything you need to have a decent, well-rounded force. By the way, in case you didn't know, I've actually done a series of videos reviewing nearly all of the different bolt action starter sets. So if you want more information and my recommendations for which ones are good and which ones are bad, check out those videos in my bolt action playlist. But with that shameless plug said, now let's get to the final point, the last golden rule you need to know about your Brits and one of the best things about the faction, which is they can fight in almost any theatre and in all periods of the war. Whether it's your BEF fighting in the fall of France and on the beaches of Dunkirk in the early war, or your desert rats fighting the Italians and Germans in the western desert, or you're taking part in Burma and some of the last brutal actions in the Pacific, your Brits are always going to feel at home. This makes them ideal for pickup games down at the local club or if you're becoming part of a new community. You may not know exactly which Axis power you're going to be fighting, but you do know there is historical precedence for your Brits wanting to have a scrap with them. Of course, the Brits were not part of the Eastern Front, but unless you're planning on taking part in Operation Unthinkable, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. As with the army rules and the massive unit variety, knowing which time period to set your British army in can be a little confusing for new players. You've got so much choice after all. 
I would recommend for anyone getting into bolt action for the first time, no matter what faction you're looking at, to go for the late war. It's where most pickup games take place because the majority of players just want to use their cool units and they don't want to worry about time period restrictions. It's just a lot more fun and it endears itself towards beer and pretzel play. And that, my little tea drinking enthusiast, is my beginner's guide to the armies of Great Britain. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of the faction and a good idea of where to start collecting. Of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the description below. Of course, being a beginner's guide, I'm sure there's lots of bits that I may have overlooked or missed out. So if you think there is some particularly important information that new British players should be aware of, make sure you get it down in that comment section. Of course, if you enjoyed today's video, then make sure you smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. If you found today's video particularly entertaining or enjoyable, please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be helping me create more Bolt Action content, but you'll also unlock a whole host of perks. The big one being access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, where we have a small yet growing and mighty Bolt Action community. And I'd just like to take a moment to say a big thank you to the latest channel members. So thank you to Bias M, Jimmy Russells, Lady Weaseldorf, Salavan, Paul Archer, Dan Cohen, Francois Daleman, Aman Block 14, Jason Garfit, and Jordan Smith. Thank you for doing your part. I also want to shout out the latest Patreons as well. So a big thank you to Franz Calamari, Michael S, Legendary Hot Dog, Kapusa, and Stragoy Gold Queen. And last, but certainly not least, I want to say a personal, heartfelt thank you to all of my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the War Masters, the people who truly have gone above and beyond the call of duty. So a big thank you to Alan Blunt III, Bon Bon Vert, Mark Panconi, Ross Miller, Sawfish Trombone, John Stubbs, Diesel Fox, and August Varney. Thank you guys. Your ongoing and generous support makes an incredible difference and is a huge part of how I'm able to do Mordian Glory full time. I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.